Hey everyone, this is Rory, and today we're talking about music, sound design, and audio effects. And most importantly, how and when to use sound in your videos and films that not only reflects and complements your visuals, but also creates something that your audience can visualize without even being able to see it. <laughs> Audio is proven to be what our brains detect before the visuals, and good sound design and good audio are an incredibly important part of the filmmaking process, and also a hugely underestimated tool. Good audio edited with crisp visuals can have your audience feeling so many different emotions at once. It can make them feel happy, or sad, or angry, or stressed, and good sound editors can even have the audience feeling all of these different emotions at once. So I have filmed and put together some footage into a little music video of sorts using some of the techniques for finding and recording audio that I'm going to talk about in this video so that you can get a good idea of how audio can enhance your videos and your films. So without further ado, I present to you Autumn in Oregon. <laughs> So that was just a quick example of how sound can enhance your edits to create something that is more meaningful for your audience. If the music was different or I used different sound effects, the audience would have a totally different viewing experience. And that leads me to my next point, which is setting the tone with your music and sound choices. Now you can have such a different impact on your audience just by slowing your shots and your sounds down or speeding them up. For example, here's that same edit I just showed you, but you can see just by slowing the shots and the sounds way down, you start to notice different details that you wouldn't if it was way faster. So again, I present to you Autumn in Oregon, part two. Will I cry? Will I leave behind? Broken and crumbled signs Hiding all my roads to you I fight Will I come to life Calling for all your light Giving all my heart to you Uh-oh And I've been falling, I've been lost so as you can see, just by slowing the whole thing down, you start to see motion in the subject rather than in the camera. This effect also makes the whole thing seem a lot calmer, maybe even tranquil. And some people like this type of editing and others don't. Again, it's really just a style. Another thing to keep in mind is your music appropriateness. So if you have a scary movie where the monster is about to eat the main character, you're probably not going to want happy, upbeat music. You'll probably want something a little more sinister, maybe even and evil. The music might also be played a little louder to emphasize that something really is about to happen, although I have seen films where they actually play it quieter to get the audience on edge to get the full effect out of their jump scares. Again, like I said, it really depends on your style and what you're going for. Now another thing that you can add to your videos and films is sound effects, or SFX. This is yet another thing I see people under using. Real sounds are what ties your audience to your location and and 
authenticity. Music is important for setting the tone, but if you don't have real sounds, there's a certain amount of disconnect that occurs. Finding and recording these authentic sounds isn't even that hard. It could be as easy as finding a pencil scratching sound effect on the internet for your tutorial video, all the way up to meticulously planning out locations that have these audio rich environments and recording audio there for your big feature film. Now it's important when you're finding and recording sound to use the obvious, but it's also important to be creative with your sounds and to replicate them with things that sound similar. Simon Cade from DS The Lar Guide really illustrated this in his video he made about sound when he took the sound effect of a chainsaw and played it on top of a shot of a motorbike jumping off a ramp. And it sounded and looked like this. Now you also don't necessarily have to record your own sound. You can fairly easily find the sound of a chainsaw online, but you wanna make sure that you're allowed to use it. Copyright infringement is a huge problem. So many people will go onto YouTube or iTunes or Spotify and take music off there to use in their films or videos, but the majority of the time is that this music you're not allowed to use. There are, of course, exceptions for this, like the YouTube channel NCS Sounds, who has over 13 million subscribers and uploads totally free, royalty-free music that you can use in your videos and films. There's also freesound.org and Sound soundbible.com that both have a huge library of sound effects if that's what you need. YouTube also has their own audio library that's built into the Creator Studio, and most of this music and most of this sound is licensed under Creative Commons, which means that you can use it in your videos as long as you put a link to the artist. Lastly, there are paid music libraries, where for a fee each month, they supply you with their collection of music that you are allowed to use in your videos and films. So what do I use? Well, I use this website called Epidemic Sound, and they're an amazing group of people that works with composers to get you the best possible music possible. And they also work with YouTube to make sure your videos aren't taken down. Some of the biggest creators on YouTube use Epidemic Sound for this reason including PewDiePie, iJustine, Peter McKinnon, The Art of Photography, Travel Fields, John Olson, the list goes on and on. Epidemic Sound is also fairly affordable. You get unlimited music and sound effects to use wherever you want, and assuming you're getting under 500,000 monthly channel views, it only costs $15 a month. If you're just starting out and you want to try out Epidemic Sound, but you don't want to commit to paying each month, fear not, they do have a 30-day free trial in which you can use all of their music just as if you had a subscription so if you're interested in that I will put a link in the description box below. Now the last thing I want to talk about is recording your own audio specifically in the studio environment like in a YouTube video or for a podcast. Now I personally use the Rode Video Mic Go for my B-roll and for my YouTube videos, mainly for the ease of use and the superb audio quality that comes out of it. It's definitely not the best microphone Rode makes, but it's also not the worst either. But it's a really good illustration of what you can do with an expensive gear. You're listening to it right now. In my case, the biggest problem I have is echo. I film in a fairly large room, and so there's a lot of places for sound to bounce off. A while back, I purchased some acoustic foam from Amazon.com, and that has really helped to reduce a lot of the echo in my room, but it's still not perfect. But I do highly recommend, if you have echo, to get some acoustic foam. It's not that expensive. I'll put a link to the one I bought in the description box below, and the majority of the time that will solve your problem with echo. The other thing you could do would be to use a lavalier microphone. The benefit of using a wireless lapel mic is that you can have your actor far away from the camera and you're still receiving the same quality audio as if your actor was close up. The other good thing about lavalier microphones is that you can hide them in your shirt and because they'll be closer to your mouth, you're going to get less echoey audio. I personally don't use a lavalier microphone because they're kind of a pain to get rigged up and when I'm making these videos, it's important that I can just sit down and start recording. 
Now if you're sitting far away from your camera and you still want to use a shotgun microphone, there is still an option. Griffin Hammond made a great video on this a while back, which I'll link in the description box below. But the main idea is that before you begin shooting and before you move the microphone into the shot, you take a frame where the mic isn't there and then you mask that over the shot of the microphone. If you're filming far away and you still don't want to use a lavalier microphone, that's probably going to be your best bet. You could also even incorporate the microphone into your videos, which wouldn't be a bad idea either. I sit really close to my camera and I have my microphone right here, which works better for me because even if I did have a mic up here and I masked it away, I would still be getting better audio quality with it down here. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I tried to cover as much as possible about audio and sound because I think it's so important to making great videos and films. If you learned something, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to Cinematography Today for videos on photography and filmmaking. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Cinematography Today, or you can find a direct link to my Instagram in the description box below, as well as all of the show notes and a list of equipment and software used to make this video. As always, my name's Ray Marion. This has been Cinematography Today, and I will catch you in the next video.